Oh uh-huh.
15, John chapter number 15. We're only going to read one verse there uh, today. Uh, John chapter number 15. We'll read verse number 13. Well, the Bible says this. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. God, we do thank you for giving us this opportunity to meet here and to remember those who have given their lives to give us freedom. Those who have given their lives to give us the freedom to be able to live here in America and have the freedoms that we do to be able to open up your word and and to be able to preach it and study it and learn it and memorize it and, and live it out in our lives. <laughs> Lord, there's so many countries in this world where that's an impossibility. But we thank you for all of those that have given their life, made the ultimate sacrifice for us here in America. And God, we thank you for Jesus Christ who made the ultimate sacrifice for all eternity for every single one of us today. Lord, we ask that you would meet with us today. God, that you would help each and every one of us to uh, forget about those things that are happening right after the service today. Forget about the uh, the lunch we're having and the, uh, the dessert auction, Lord, but help us to be able to concentrate on your word today. Help us to be able to remember what you've done as we remember what these uh, men and women have done for us in our life as well. God, I ask if there's anyone here today that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, I ask that today would be their day of salvation. Help us as Christians to examine our hearts and get it right with you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. So on April, in April uh, 1863 in Columbus, Mississippi, after decorating the graves of her two sons who served during the Civil War as Confederate soldiers, an elderly woman also decorated uh, two mounds in the corner of the cemetery. An observer asked her, Hey, what are you doing? Those are the graves of, uh, of two Union soldiers. This lady's reply was, Yes, I know. I also know that somewhere in the north, a mother or young wife mourns for them just as we mourn for ours. This lady and a few other people set in motion what we know today as Memorial Day. So today we pause to remember those who have given their lives Listen, Memorial Day is, is, is a, a, a day of remembrance for those who have given their life, sacrificed everything, so that you and I can have the freedom we have today. Veterans Day is for all of those who have, have served and are still alive today. But today we honor those who have given their life. Again, in John chapter number 15, verse number 13, the Bible tells us, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And that's exactly what those men and women that we celebrate today have done. They laid down their lives for this nation. It was a costly sacrifice. And today... As we honor those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. I would like to look at what they sacrificed. What they did. And then also compare it to what Christ has done for us. So number one this morning. They put on the uniform. They put on the uniform. You know our military is a voluntary military uh, and so that means that everyone that is serving in the military, they chose to, to sign up. They chose to go in. But uh, we have such a thing as a draft, do we not? And in, uh, on September 16, 1940, the draft was signed into law. 
At that point, all men between the ages of 21 and 45 had to sign up for the draft. That has adjusted a little bit, and today all men age 18 through 25 uh, still have to sign up for the draft. The draft was used in six, mili six uh, military conflicts. The American uh, Revolutionary War, the American Civil War, World War I, World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. There are many who refused to serve. Some ran away to Canada. Some burned their draft cards as a way of, of protest. And some uh, just simply went and, and, and hid, hoping that they wouldn't be found. But those who we honor today, they chose to stand up and put on the uniform and serve their country. Whether they were drafted or enlisted, they chose to follow through and put on the uniform. And for that, today we honor them. They wore the uniform to represent their country and be identified as an American. They took off their civilian clothes and they, and they willingly limited their, their clothing to what was distributed to them. I see all different colors in the room today. But in the military, it was brown, green, camouflage, and your military boots. They, they cho willingly chose to set all of that aside and wear what was given to them to wear. They wore the uniform to be unashamedly identified as a Marine, <coughs> Army, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard soldier. To be one of the good guys, to be a member of a band of brothers committed to serving for the welfare of the United States of America, and they chose to put on the uniform. Not only did they choose to put on the uniform, but number two, they, uh, they moved into harm's way. These that we are honoring today, they moved into harm's way. When the battle began, they could have ran away. They could have deserted. They could have chosen to, to think only of themselves, but they didn't. As I was studying for this, I found this example. It says, uh, years ago, a ship uh, wrecked off the New England coast. A young member of the Coast Guard rescue crew uh, said to his captain, Hey, we can't go out. We'll never make it back. But the captain, who was a longtime military man, replied to this young man, No, we don't have to come back. But we must go out. Knowing the risk, those we give honor to today didn't cower from the task. They engaged in the battle. And in doing so, they paid the ultimate price. They moved into harm's way. They gave their life so that you and I these men that we honor today not only put on the uniform and moved into harm's way, but they remained faithful to the end. They remained faithful to the end. They were close enough in, uh, uh, in, on the battlefield that they were in range of the enemy's weapons. But they kept faith. And they kept fighting. They kept fighting. Many even charged the enemy and some even sacrificed their own lives so, so that their military brothers and sisters can, be, can, can move forward. The point is, even in the face of death, they served faithfully 
on our behalf. They remained faithful to the end. Fourthly, they remained faithful to the end and then they died so that others could be free. These men and women that, uh, that sacrificed everything, today we honor them. Today we remember them. Today we remember what they have done. They have sacrificed their life so that you and I can be free. Their sacrifice enable you and I as Americans to be free to enjoy the, our lives to the fullest. Whether we agree with each other or not, these men gave us the ability to be free, to live life the way we live it, to think the way we think, to vote the way we vote. Hey, these men gave and women gave their life so that we could be free. There's a father, Dennis Edward O'Brien said this. He was a sergeant in the U.S. Marine Corps and he said, it is the soldier, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It is the soldier, not the poet, who has given us the freedom of speech. It is the soldier, not the campus organizer, who has given us freedom to demonstrate. It is the soldier who salutes the flag, who serves beneath the flag, whose coffin is draped by the flag, who allows the protester to burn the flag. We have seen that all too often in our day. But yet these men and women gave their life so that we can be free. To live our life the way we live it. To think the way we think. And can I tell you, Americans do, does, or do <coughs> think differently than what the majority of the rest of the world. Because our life is very different. Because of the life that these men and women gave up so that we could have the life we have. Another pastor said this. They might have uh, been lured into service by the idea that they could be all, uh, be all you can be in the army. But they died so that we could become all we can be in our life, in our jobs, in our families, and in our relationships. Today I encourage you to spend time in prayer thanking God for those who gave their life for the freedom that you and I have today. I encourage you to, to, to thank God in prayer today and tomorrow. And every day that we, that we live here in these United States. Listen, we are still free today. And it's because of the shed blood that these men and women gave for you and for me. So that we can have freedom we have today. As we remember what these soldier men and women did, it's of utmost importance that we also remember what Christ did for us as well. Hey, these soldier men and women, they gave their all. They left it all on the battlefield, including their life. But there's someone else who was given their all. Jesus also put on the uniform. Jesus put on the uniform. In, God, in John chapter 1 verse number 14. The Bible says. And the word became flesh. And dwelt among us. In, in uh, Philippians chapter 2. In verse number 7. The Bible also says there. That Jesus emptied himself, it says, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Hey, listen, this is Jesus Christ. He put on the uniform. He was and still is the God of this universe. 
And he chose to set aside his robes of glory. He chose to set aside uh, his, his, uh, his glory that he had in, in heaven and traded them in for swaddling clothes and flesh and blood. Hey, Jesus Christ put on the uniform. He willingly chose to come to this earth to become one of us. Hey, listen, we need to understand, we need to remember who we're talking about. Listen, this is God. The one and only true God of all the world and all the universe and everything in it. Willingly chose to come to this earth and become one of us. He became flesh. And blood. He was fashioned or suited up in humanity. He was the only begotten Son of God, but He chose to call Himself the Son of Man. Why? Because He wanted us to know that He is for us. He is for us and he's on our side. The thing that we don't that we don't think about a lot is that this is the commander and chief of all the heaven's army and of all the universe. And he chose to walk this planet as a buck private he chose to, to, to walk on this earth as just a lowly human being. He chose to be born into this world in, in, a, in a manger, in a barn, if you will. In the place where, where the animals eat. To be wrapped in swaddling clothes. And to be wrapped in flesh and blood. But can I tell you this morning, Jesus Christ also put on the uniform. He also, Jesus also moved into harm's way. He moved into harm's way there in Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 21. The Bible says, from that time, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the, and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Hey, unlike these uh, enlisted or those that who agreed to, uh, to abide by the draft in the United States military who realized that, the, that there was a chance whenever they went off to battle. These, these people realized that there was a chance that they might not come home. Jesus Christ knew that he came to die. Jesus Christ knew that as he came to this earth, he was coming to die. Hey, all of our, our soldier men and women uh, that, have, uh, that have given their life, they've given their sacrifice, they left for the, for the battlefield thinking there is a chance that they may not make it back. But Jesus knew <coughs> he was coming to earth. To earth to die. Hey, can I tell you this morning, he, he put himself in harm's way. It was a decision that the Bible tells us was made before the foundation of the entire earth. The, before the earth was even formed. Jesus knew when he left heaven that he was coming to this earth. And his primary mission was to die for you and for me. The thing is... Because Jesus is God, he already knew everything that was going to happen to him. He knew everything that man would do to him before he came. And yet he still chose to come. 
The men and women that sacrificed their life on the battlefield for you and I to have the freedom that we have today, listen, they had no idea what awaited them. They had no idea what, uh, what the enemy may do to them. Jesus knew. That's right. I think that there may have been quite a few of those men and women that gave their life if they had known what was going to happen to them. They might have changed their mind. They might have deserted. They might have said, hey, you know what? I'm going to just hide out for a little bit. Try to wait till it's over. Jesus knew. He knew what awaited him. He knew that he was going to be, uh, he was going to come into this world and that he was going to die for people who don't even care about him, who will reject everything he ever stood for and, who, and, and what he stands for today. But yet he died. He knew that while he was here, he would have his beard just pulled out of his face. He would be spit upon, he would be beaten. He would have a crown of thorns placed upon his head. He knew all of this. And he knew that at the, at the end, he would be stripped of everything. Of all of his clothing. The humiliation that he suffered. And then have his arms stretched on a cross. And nails driven into his hands and into his feet. He knew that while he was hanging on that cross... People were going to be wagging their tail and wagging their, their finger at them, saying, Look at look at you. Listen, you're the child of God. If you're the if you're so big and mighty, then come on down from there. He knew this before he even came. And yet he still came. And he still hung on that cross. He still felt those nails. He still felt his beard being plucked, pulled out of his face. He still felt the crown of thorns being shoved down onto his head. And he still felt the sting of death for you and for me. Hey, can I tell you this morning, Jesus Christ put himself in harm's way. Jesus said in John chapter 12, verse number 27, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But look at the end of that verse. He says, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Hey, this is the very reason I'm here. This is the very reason why I am wrapped in flesh and blood to come and die. Jesus knew what his mission was. He knew that he would come to die for you and for me. Are we deserving of it? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But yet he did. <laughs> he knew the consequences of, of him confronting the Pharisees and the, and the governmental leaders there uh, while he was here. He knew what, uh, what they would do to him, yet he did it anyway. There in John chapter 5 and verse number 18, the Bible says, Therefore uh, the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. Hey, Jesus confronted the, the Pharisees and the governmental uh, leaders Knowing full well what the consequence was. He willingly allowed Pontius Pilate's order to be carried out. Which, which brought him to be crucified. And can I tell you this morning that Jesus at any moment could have shut it all down. By just the words of his mouth. He could have shut it all down. It would have all been over. But he didn't. <laughs> He continued to put himself in harm's way. In Matthew chapter 26 and verse number 53, uh, the Bible tells us there, 
This is Jesus speaking, and he says this. He says, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? Though Jesus knew the risk, he didn't cower from the task, didn't shrink from his duty, or abandon his mission. He chose to put himself in harm's way. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 8, the Bible says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And can I tell you, Jesus Christ put on the uniform and he put himself in harm's way. But he also remained faithful to the end. He remained faithful to the end. There in John chapter 19 and verse number 30, the Bible says, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Hey, Jesus knew all along that he had the power to stop anything and everything, to stop all of this in its very tracks. But he was faithful to the end. He hung on that cross, <coughs> hanging there, humiliated, beaten, bloody. And he said, It is finished. And Jesus was faithful to the end. He said, It is finished. And he hung his head and gave up the ghost. He died. He was faithful to the end. He could have come down from that cross at any moment. And can I tell you this morning that no one killed Jesus. No one killed him. But he gave his life. He gave his life. There's all kinds of people in the world today that say, Listen, the, the Jews killed him. Or the Romans killed him. No, Jesus gave his life. This is the reason why he came to this earth. To give his life. In John chapter 10. Verse number 17 and 18. The Bible says. Therefore doth my father love me. Because I lay down my life. That I might take it again. Look at what he says in verse number 18. No man taketh it from me. But I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. This commandment have I received of my Father. I'm going to tell you this morning that Jesus Christ was faithful to the end. He put his life in harm's way. He put on the uniform, flesh and blood. And he died so that we could be free. Jesus Christ died so that we can be free. There in John chapter 3, verse number 17 and verse number 18, the Bible says this. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hey, that is being set free. <coughs> Verse number 18, it says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he, he doesn't believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Romans chapter 8, verse number 2, the Bible says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Hey, can I tell you this morning, you are set free from the law of sin and death. You no longer are a slave to, to sin. You no longer are, 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 are captive to death. Hey, Jesus Christ has set you free if you know him as, as your Lord and Savior. You've been set free. He died so that we can be free from the penalty and the wages of sin. Romans chapter 6 and verse number 23, the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death. 
Hey, that's what you and I deserve. Because the Bible says that we are all sinners. And we all come short of the glory of God. That means we've been separated from God. But verse number 23 of Romans chapter uh, 6 goes on and says, For the wages of sin is death. But it says, But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hey, this is a free gift. Amen. You have been set free. Freely. You don't have to give anything for it. You don't have to pay anything for it. You just have to receive it. Jesus Christ came to this earth. He was wrapped in flesh and blood. He put himself in danger uh, by going, by coming into this earth, into this world. He was faithful to the end. And he died to set you and I free. John chapter 8, verse number 36. The Bible says, if, if the Son therefore hath made you free, then you know what? Ye shall be free indeed. Hmm. Verse number 32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Can I tell you this morning that Jesus Christ is the truth. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the truth. Jesus Christ left his home in heaven humbled himself. He put on the uniform. He put himself in harm's way. He was faithful to the end and he died to give you and I freedom from sin and death. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hey, he not, he not only gave his life, but he rose again the third day to give you and I eternal life. Hey, if he if he would have stayed in that grave, you and I would have no hope today. Because our Savior would be dead. But he rose from the grave on that third day and he has given us the chance to have eternal life through him. Through what he did by putting on the uniform. By putting himself in harm's way. By being faithful to the end and dying to set others free. Hey, he died to set you and I free. Today and tomorrow, as we remember those who paid the ultimate price, paid the ultimate sacrifice, so that you and I can have our freedoms that we have here in America, we need to also remember the sacrifice that Jesus gave for us. We were enslaved to sin and hell bound. But Jesus, but Jesus gave his life for ours. Just like these men and women gave their life so that we can be free. Remember what these men and women has done for you. Giving you and I the opportunity to be free in these United States of America. But Jesus Christ gave us the opportunity to be free for all eternity. Not just for the time that we're, the short time that we're here in this world. Not just for the short time that we're here in these United States of America. But he gave us the opportunity to be free for all eternity. Yeah. Why? Because he put on the uniform. He became flesh and blood. He put himself in harm's way. He was faithful to the end. He gave his life for yours and mine. Maybe you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe this is your first time to hear about what Jesus Christ has done for you. I want you to know that, listen, Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. Who chose to leave his home in heaven. Leave all the glory and honor and praise and worship that he had in heaven. He chose to come to this earth. Be wrapped in flesh and blood just like you and I. He chose, freely chose to become a human being just like you and I. So that he can die. 
because the wages of sin is death. He died for your sins and for mine. Again, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We deserve death. We deserve hell. But God doesn't want that for anyone. That's why Jesus Christ came. He died for you. And he died for me. So that we can have eternal life. So that we can be free from sin and death. Christian, what about you today? Hey, you know Christ is your Lord and Savior? When was the last time you thanked Him for what He sacrificed for you? Today, as we remember those who sacrificed to give us freedom here in America, remember Christ who gave us freedom for all eternity. All eternity. Not just for the short time that we're here. If you will please stand with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. I'll stay in the Standing firm.